All right, it is 11.09, and I think I haven't had a recording today, so I need to catch up before I get too carried away. I did have a trade with TRI, and I want to see if this one can continue to work out. I might have left a lot of money on the table, but this was a bit nerve-wracking, the way it just jumped from this level right here to the 160s. I wanted something nice and gradual, and that wasn't the case. It just jumped, and I don't like it when the stock does something like that. I want to see what this one can do over a longer period of time and I did have my first trade with AOPP today and this one did not work out. Essentially this thing had a nice morning spike from this 90 cent level. It went all the way past a dollar which was nice. It broke the nice round number of one dollar in the morning and that led to this spike. It got higher. It got to 110 and then it started the downtrend and I was looking for the first dip buy setup in. I actually wanted it to drop lower. I wanted it to get under VWAP, but this thing was holding so well at 102. You can see there was some volume here, and it just was able to hold on to it for such a long period of time that I thought, you know, this is kind of aggravating, but it might try to hold 102 and then try to do the turnaround. It might be one of those that has a really nice spike. It drops, but it never touches VWAP because it's that strong, and then it continues to uptrend. I did buy 80 shares at... I would say basically 103 and that was at 955. Let me turn off the alarm. All right, I was in right around here at 103 and again I was at 955 and what happened? It did break below 102, so when it did that, I got out at 101. Just 80 shares because I thought worst case scenario it might you know break and it's going to have like a panic downtrend. It's going to downtrend as far as it uptrend as strong as it uptrend. So that was the idea there. This one did not work out but it was a good attempt. It did eventually get under VWAP here but then this level broke. It did ultimately turn around but there's just not that much range. Ideally it would have been a dip here under VWAP. Maybe a buy at some $1 when it looks like it's trying to regain itself but then it only gets to $1. And two cents, it doesn't continue the head higher, or maybe even try to break the day high. So that was one trade right there. And then CYDY, I did trade this one. This one kind of worked. It didn't offer that much. And essentially, the idea with CYDY is that it had a downtrend, but then it showed that it was able to turn around and morning spike. Um, well, I guess not really morning spike, but spike after it had this downtrend. It showed that it could make a move towards the top. And then it started a downtrend, and then it had its first dip under VWAP, as long as you don't count this one right here. And I did buy 150 shares at 115 at 1032, which was right here. It looked like it was going to, you know, not be able to break the wick right here of 114. It was a wall of bidders at 114. And it looked like it was also going to break this trend line that I drew. The problem was is that there were just too many sellers. And this stock that are dumping their shares at the bid, it wasn't looking that nice. And then 117 had like a 30,000 share seller at the ask. And this is why it brought this price action down. It started to turn around and then that seller was still there. I did sell my entire position at 1043. So I gave it a, you know, 11 minutes. I gave it some time and it was trying to uptrend, but I didn't like how that 30,000 share seller at 117 was still there and it wasn't ideally um, being as strong as what I wanted it to be. So I ended up selling right here at 1043, right in the middle. So like 115, like maybe right here is when I got out. It did, you know, get to VWAP right now, but it took its time. I don't really like the way it did it, but in theory it's working out. In best case scenario, it can continue to break above VWAP and make a move towards the highs. And this will just be like a dip under VWAP. Maybe even an inverse head and shoulders. The shoulder, the head, and then the shoulder here. That could be a case too. But yeah, I don't know. This doesn't look that nice. And then I had this last trade with TRRI. And I might have done the right thing here. Selling early. I got in at 153 at 11.07. Why? This thing was downtrending. It was going to break the trend line. I got in right here at 153. And then it jumped on the air. I didn't like that. And I sold at 163. The next minute at 1108. I could have missed out on a lot of money. Because this thing could have easily have just continued the uptrend. and jumped on air. It's so strong it gets to the 180s. And maybe even tries to get near the day high. But that was clearly not the case right here. And it decided to continue the downtrend instead. So... That was a trade right there. 
I'll make an update later as to what this does. I probably won't try to dip buy this anymore. Because this might be the kind of stock that just makes a run up and then it just sells off the rest of the day. It doesn't have a history of doing anything like that. You know, when you look at a longer period of time, but... That could totally be the case. I'll make an update later. Three trades. I don't think I want to trade anything else unless something looks so beautiful. I was looking at SEII for a high day breakout right around here following this trend line, but it just fell asleep and stopped doing anything. So this could be a setup later if it tries to break it, but it might be kind of iffy. It could try to do something though. And SIRC, this did offer a morning panic bounce play. This one actually did work out. I could have been in at 38 and I, um, I hesitated, but this one went to 39. It held for the most part above B went minus this little dip here, which is still higher than here. And then it broke this level and it went back to the 40. So this was definitely a setup I could have taken. That would have worked out really nicely. I'll make an update later. It is 7.08 p.m. and I am here to call it off. Overall, I'm going to be up on a day. Let's see. 8 was with 175 and then I lost 154 $7.21, which wasn't bad. I missed out, however, on this one with SIRC, the morning panic bounce. Wait, this one actually worked out. I could have been in at 38. Probably I would have sold into the 39s. I wanted to really have been able to hold through, or at least, best case scenario, I did do what I'm trying to get better at with morning panic bounce plays, and that, you know, I try to sell a lot after it breaks the trend line, but I'm still going to have a piece left, and then ideally that makes a higher low from this original level, and then it continues higher like it did here, and then I could have sold in the 42s, and that would have been a very impressive amount of profit, and today didn't necessarily become a good day for shorting, um, especially compared to the other day, but it is kind of rounding off. We do have like this top here, and then it looks like it's kind of no longer able to gain the same momentum as it did previously, and it's been having lower highs. But this thing can obviously still try to do something towards the upside, and I actually was considering a setup near the end of the day, thinking that, you know, if there are a lot of short sellers, and we're at a Friday, and they don't want to be short over the week, and maybe it can do like a spike towards the close, it didn't do it, but that was something I was interested in, and I would have traded just a tiny amount of shares just to see if that setup works, not necessarily, you know, um, putting a whole bunch into it. Just something that I can learn from. That was pretty much about it. This one did do like one of those trend line breakouts, you know, where it breaks the down trending trend line. You can see it kind of did it around here ultimately. And then it has some distance, and then it eventually went from the 106 to 150, which is massive. That's like a 50% move, even though it doesn't look like much. So this one was pretty impressive. And I do like how it broke the trend line, and they didn't immediately uptrend and kind of just had itself some distance from it, which kind of makes it, um, at least in my mind, more likely to be able to do something than if it just breaks the trend line. And it immediately jumps like that trade I took back here that made most of today it wasn't ideal the way it did it this is something that i would have liked not necessarily that that's pretty much it in terms of today okay this one actually did break out towards the end of the day but it doesn't seem like it looks that nice so i guess there was a setup there that's pretty much it for today a pretty good attempt for what it was cydy did you know make a dip under VWAP and turn around. It just took a really long time and I didn't like the level 2 battle that was going on. That's about it for today. I'm going to call it off right here. Just a few trades. One scratch with ALPP. CYDY was a scratch as well. It didn't really work out. And TRI did kind of work. I sold into an uptrend. It was profitable, but I would have liked something like this when it broke the downtrending trend line. That's it for today.